Okay, we're back live here, winding down day three of three days of nonstop coverage here on SiliconANGLE's The Cube, our flagship program. We've got the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE.com, and my co-host today is Jeff Kelly for this segment, and we're here with entrepreneur, CEO Ben Werther of Platfora, um, launched startup, um, doing very, very well. You guys launched, uh, Ben, welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you, thank you, always good to be back. Uh, Thanks, we always John. love having you on because one, um, two, multiple reasons. One, you're an entrepreneur, CEO, venture-backed startup doing some really amazing work and, and really stole the show at Strata uh, Hadoop World in the fall with your positioning and your launch of your company, Thank which you. essentially was redefining BI and then how that's getting done in, at, at, a, at a scale and, and performance no one's ever seen before, mm -hmm. or heard of, or oh, seen before. Absolutely. Uh, and the website was fantastic. We we're all impressed with the design of the, of the new website. But uh, in, in all seriousness, you guys have really been working hard on your positioning. It's unique, it's about, it's about a forward-looking view. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, the talk of this show is many themes uh, going on, obviously Strata's got a lot, a lot of range, but the big news was the big you know, commercial uh, jockeying and competitiveness around EMC and Intel coming on the distro side. Uh -huh. um, so that news aside, really it's about the BI market, the pre-existing BI market. Yeah, you know, data yeah. Warehouse, they put some SQL, Hadoop put some SQL in, and target those existing folks mm -hmm. uh, that you were talking about. Indeed. Uh, that, that are sitting there like looking for a solution and need help, so the BI market is trying to be big data ready. Yep. So can you share your commentary on, on, on yep. one, that news, and we'll get back into some of the things you're doing, but I want to get your perspective on the recent news around this, this BI position yeah. in EMC. And yeah, absolutely. I, you know, there's, um, there's a few pieces to the, the, the story that everybody's been telling, and a lot of, a lot of it comes, comes down to uh, sudden, you know, SQL interfaces on top of Hadoop. And uh, you know, I think we're actually very supportive of you know, the evolution, it's a very natural thing, it's something we've anticipated you know, really probably since the start of the company that this would start to evolve uh, and that the way you get out the raw data in Hadoop is going to get better and faster. Um, it's still very, very early days. You know, these, you know, we're, you know, good work by Cloudera with Impala, you know, the, the, um, the work uh, by you know, Green, Greenplum, uh, the Hawk interface is pretty interesting and there's others as well out there. Uh, you know, I think fundamentally though, um, I think you've got to sort of say, wh wh what is this, what, where does that get us to? So let's say these things are um, they work just as advertised, um, which is, you know, it, it will happen over time. Um, they, they, they really are doing a good job of starting to rebuild the traditional data warehouse stack inside Hadoop. And so, you know, the, who should be worried by that? You know, they think the Teradatas, the Oracles, the folks who are taking the alternate position, which says, you know, we want, don't use Hadoop, we'll use it as a, just an offshoot of our it's trend, relational it's, database. It's trending, people say, hey, I want some Hadoop. Oh yeah, exactly. bolt it on and exactly. get some cheap data yeah. warehouse. I think, I think the difference for us and why actually we're incredibly, we feel incredibly good about this sort of, this evolution is it only highlights the need for business value from all these Hadoop investments. That's the missing piece. People, you know, you pour all that data in and now business users crowd around it saying, well, I want to do something with that. And before it was, I've got to go get a bunch of programmers and I'm going to spend months working on it to try to get at this data that's, you know, you captured it in the data reservoir. That's great. Now how do I go do something with it? You had SQL interfaces, now it's a little different. Now you can hire DBAs and spend six to 12 months modeling it and building aggregates and, and mapping some, and your and BI and tools. And there's some infrastructure, there's racks of gear involved, oh. right? Yeah, and, and fundamentally you got all the IT pain of before now just rolled forward in a way that, you know, if everything aligns and the technology was really, really d even better than, than anticipated, you'd probably you know, be able to get up and running in six to 12 months doing a project around this stuff. And, you know, and, that's, and that's, that's great from the existing BI vendors who want to sort of tell a story about being relevant in this new world. But I think that the, the biggest story is, okay, these things are great, but there's a much different architecture that, we, that we're excited by. It's about drawing out and accelerating and building these in-memory accelerated software-defined data marts that are automatically generated from the data reservoir. Software-led. So, yes. Software-led yes. data marts. Uh -huh. It's not defined yet. <laughs> no, no, it's a good point. Okay, uh, data yeah, marts yeah. is not yeah. a one-trick pony anymore. Sure. Absolutely. Right? Um, but I think the, you know, the essence of it is get IT out of the loop of doing all yeah. this stuff, you know, so that you don't have to wait a year. You can be doing things the next day. Um, and that's, that's kind of where we So what's your take? Happen. So let's break this down, because you kind of went a little general on that. I want to be specific. Let's, yeah. EMC Greenplum in particular, yes, okay? Yes, yes. So they're claiming that this is massive performance increase. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, you, your value proposition is very specific. Yes. It takes months and months of schema definition, and then, you know, then you're up and running, yeah. and then there might be a change. 
Yeah. Um, that schema sets up some queries and you get some reports and then you say, yeah. ah, I'm going to ask another question yeah. or do something different. Yeah. You got to re-architect the schema. Yes. That's not a good scenario. No. Is that what Greenplum is proposing? Yeah. So, so Greenplum is, um, I'm not know, they're, taking the best, they're taking Greenplum database and Hadoop and HDFS, fusing them together in a way that you can now use Greenplum SQL to get at that data in Hadoop. But they're and the same problem that you're referring to. But it does, I mean, it, it, all of these do. This goes back 25, 30 years. You know, the problem with that is, it, you know, so even if you built the most optimized Greenplum or Teradata or any of these systems, if you have 10 terabytes sitting in a, in a, uh, in a, in a table and, you, and you, users are just writing ad hoc queries against that, it's going to take minutes or hours to respond to these things. But putting it in Greenplum and calling it real time doesn't magically change that. It, in fact, it gets slower because you're reading mm -hmm. raw HDFS now. So you still need to go do all that hold manual. On, hold on. Let's back up yeah. there. It's slower. Oh, it's they're sl claiming they're it's slower faster. Than, or it's, it's slower than the than the MPP database. Okay, it's, got it. It's, okay. I mean, if, if, you know, Hive is the uh, is the easy uh, comparison point. Everybody's like hundred times faster than Hive, and that's because they're a pinata, you know, as yeah. Sean Connolly yeah. said. You know. <laughs> Jeff, right, what's your there, take on well, what you said? Well, there are performance implications, it sounds like, from your perspective. If, when, you're, yeah. when you're applying a technology that was not designed to run inside a, a tube-like yeah. environment, yeah. uh, there's some performance implications, uh, for sure. Yeah, I think you know, the, net of, the net of it is, you, it will be faster than going through Hive, mm -hmm. but it's not consistently fast. You ask the wrong question, you hit a lot of data, it takes a very, very long time to respond. Um, and so, it's, it's walking us back into the traditional data warehouse world, which I think is a... With some Hadoop bolted with on. With some Hadoop it. bolted on, rather than saying how do we natively use Hadoop and, and produce a model where we can accelerate and provide consistently fast, you know, sub okay, so, so, so let me just frame this up. Okay, yeah. so that makes sense. They're kind of suboptimal for the future, but yeah. they have an installed base that makes sense for them. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. so okay, data where, old data warehousing model yeah. with some BI efficiencies yeah. uh, with the MPP database. Okay, great. Yeah. That's EMC. Let's go to what you guys are doing that's different. So yes, what now what are you now you guys are more of um, of a yeah, so platform I, that drives dynamic queries. So just take us through yeah. the difference between old way and new way. All right, way. so picture picture data in HDFS. You've landed all this data from different uh, different silos in your organization in HDFS. Now, you can get at that with, with MapReduce, with Hive, with Impala, with Hawk, all these different interfaces. They're eight or 10 more, right? There's all these different ways of getting at it. They all have their warts and their benefits and, and what have you. None of these are something that a business user is going to be tapped into. So our technology is kind of three layers. At the lowest level, we're driving whatever those interfaces are to optimally automatically aggregate, distill, pull metadata, and build out things from that data into a scale out in memory layer that is uh, designed for consistently fast sub-second performance of interaction. So it's like an intelligent cache that's driving Hadoop, mm -hmm. pulling out the things that are relevant and, and evolving them as your needs change. And then into a completely web-based exploratory VR mm -hmm. environment. Where the key is that kind of closed loop notion that you, you have to aggregate and distill for performance. So to make, instead of the old way, like every other version, every other vendor where it's, you spend, you know, you, an IT person a year ahead of time did this, and if they're wrong or you ask a different question, you're out of luck. In our model, the aggregations, the, just the way the data is distilled, it's automatically changing based on what's interesting and relevant to the users, the business users at the mm -hmm. end of the day. So instead of waiting months and having developers, literally we'll go in against any of those interfaces, really, uh, and be able to be up and running in an afternoon and providing business users with interactive sub So what examples can you provide? We've got only two more minutes, so I want to sure. drill down because we really like your approach. So what is your um, success in some of the clients you're talking to? Can you yeah. share with some of the people that you're working with since you got a lot of funding, yes. you launched in, in the fall. <coughs> oh yeah, yeah. So we, I mean, we're going to be, we're going to be telling uh, later, later this quarter a, a big customer story around, uh, um, a, a, around our product, but the, Today, most of the beta customers, we're in beta today, we're in GA shortly. Most of our beta customers, they're Fortune 500s and Global 2000, web advertising media, financial services, um, uh, retail, as well as you know, in the federal space. They're companies that, have, that aren't necessarily the bleeding edge technology adopters. They're focused on, I want to br you know, bring all this data together and fundamentally, what's the business value story on that? How do I 
quickly get answers and not to spend so time. What, what, is their, what is their business value to you? What, are, what do they tell you when they say, hey Ben, you know, we really love this product, yeah. or hey, we didn't like this or like that. What yeah, feedback are you getting? So the feedback we're getting is that we're the first product where they're landing data in, business, different teams in the organization are landing data in Hadoop, and that's the easy part. Mm -hmm. And then they're able to ask questions of that data immediately the next day in ways that business users are understanding and able to drive. And that's for them a complete transformation where before it was six, 12 months before they were able to get at that data. Well, the, the other thing, you know, in the traditional BI world, one of the issues was, you know, adoption is still, you know, the number frequently mentions about 20% mm. uh, penetration in yeah. a given organization. So the issue is around making the tools actually yeah. easy and intuitive enough. Yes. So how, how, what are you doing to make sure we don't repeat that pattern yeah. now in this oh, world? Oh, absolutely. So we started with, uh, you know, from day one, a heavy investment in design. So really, um, some of the best design and usability people in the world. We have one of our, we have a design advisory board led by a guy named Luke Rublowski, who was the chief design architect at Yahoo, uh, did bag check and some other companies. Uh, great team of people around on the design side, complementing mm -hmm. the engineering. And then we really started from the ground up with um, both concepts and also technology, the latest in technology. So we're the first BI product in the market mm -hmm. that uses HTML5 canvas base mm -hmm. uh, te technology. That means we're using the latest kind of the gaming engines in the web browser that's mm -hmm. all natively in there. Let's us do hundreds of thousands of marks on the screen, really, really lightning fast, just you know, stuff that goes to tablets and phones and the rest very, very seamlessly. And, and just trying to focus on how do you take a fresh look at this, build in from the ground up, you know, collaboration, um, exploration back to the raw data, mm -hmm. all these concepts that were never part of the model of these products that were built around Windows and SQL and sort of the old way of doing things. Right. And we can make it just, just remarkably better. Hmm. And uh, one last question. So when, when you're going to market, um, you know, obviously what, what occurred to me with the kind of applying the data warehousing model inside of Hadoop, that's, a great, that's great news for the traditional BI vendors because mm -hmm. they want to sit on top. Oh, no doubt. This gives them a, a way in. Yeah. Uh, so when you go to a customer, are you, are you typically try, are trying to, are you replacing traditional BI tools? Or are they saying we're all in on Hadoop and we need, now we need a BI tool? Or are you yeah. living side by side sometimes with the I, I, more traditional players? So our, fa our favorite customers, and this is probably the most common case, is mm -hmm. the, we're, we're, they're, in, they're both feed into Hadoop because they know that they, they want to build this data reservoir and they're committed. And they've, they've taken a few attempts with traditional BI tools or these sort of first generation ways of driving a dupe. Mm -hmm. And they have those, those arrows in their back <laughs> and they're feeling the pain. And then, and then when we show them what's possible, it, it's a very, very rapid, <laughs> uh, rapid proof of value. So, you know, the, the difference is remarkable when you actually see the way you can drive it seamlessly. It's almost like, we sometimes think, sometimes think of it like the iPhone versus like the old, mm -hmm. you know, clunky phones mm -hmm. before. If you design from the bottom up and get the experience right, you know, it's just qualitatively a whole different league than the other ways of doing it. My final question as we're getting ready for the break is, um, we've been talking about things old way, new way. Yeah. That's kind of always like, we look at the cube because it's emerging market. Um, old way, I see the EMC Green Plum going to attack their existing incumbent base, try to grope to the future, and Green yeah. Plum's flexing a lot of muscles, and you know, depending on how the world spins, maybe that'll be right or wrong. Um, but I want you to end with, with a real description of the folks out there, this new architecture yeah. that's emerging. Yeah. And that's really important because a lot, there's a lot of noise, right? So you yeah. know, explain what is the table stakes, what's the yeah. minimum, what's this going to look like? Sure. Yeah, and in fact, if I was to make one prediction for five years from now, the thing that I think more, almost certainly I'd put pretty much any money on is that, w that the idea of the, uh, the, f the inflexible, the EDW of today, the data warehouse, is replaced by the idea of this sort of fluid, agile data reservoir that I pour, pour data into Hadoop, and it isn't even about Hadoop, it's the idea that I don't have to make decisions ahead of time, and then the new stack that evolves on top of that, that's designed around that, that agile, exploratory nature from the ground up. And we aren't going to be the only player, but today you know, we're taking a leading role in making that tangible for, for people. And I think that that's the biggest shift. That's the, that's the shift in big data. That's the, thing that, that's the big thing that matters and affects pretty much every business out there. All the other stuff, there's a lot of stuff on the fringes, but this is stuff that really is going to change the industry. Well, Ben, thanks for coming on theCUBE. We really appreciate it. Great to have you Thank on. You. No, it's the end of the last day, and I really appreciate you making the time to come on. This is not an obvious area for the press, the analysts out there to really understand this, these nuances of the business value of the future. Um, having you know, really fast solutions is one thing, but actually sending that out with value, business value, which right now is what everyone wants to talk about, is important. And we're going to stay on at siliconangle.com. We're going to keep on following this important trend. Uh, stay, stay on SiliconANGLE and keep on following the story. This is theCUBE, we'll be back with our next guest after this short break. Great, thank you.